right basically today we will be doing emulsions so this is biochemistry and this is physical chemical principles so what is an emulsion an emulsion is defined as a fine dispersal of minute droplets of one liquid in another in which it is not soluble right so we can have oil in water emulsions and we can have water and oil emulsions and why are these important because each of these type of emulsions have various therapeutic and pharmaceutical functions or you, we can basically use them to that effect so how can we form a, how can we form an emulsion um if you take some oil and we put it in in some water and we shake the two vigorously we will indeed get an emulsion however the emulsion obtained will be an unstable one and what do i mean by unstable so this is the unstable emulsion we have droplets of oil and these are finely dispersed in another liquid and the other liquid is basically the water however because this emulsion is unstable these minute droplets of oils will soon coalesce and they will form a layer of oil over the water right so this over here is the layer of oil over the water so simply by taking the oil and the water together and shaking them vigorously we can in fact get an emulsion but this emulsion will be unstable because the finely dispersed droplets of oil will soon coalesce and they will form a separate layer of oil atop the water so that is not what we need so in order to form a stable emulsion together with the oil and the water we add an emulsifying agent right and because of the emulsifying agent we now get a stable emulsion right so what are examples of emulsifying agents the examples are soaps the examples are detergents and soaps and detergents easy to remember the examples are pile salts of all things right and we also have phospholipids and these are some examples of emulsifying agents given in mushtaq right so what is the mechanism of action of these emulsifying agents how do they lead to the formation of a stable emulsion um let's take the example of soap we have a particular soap and this is its molecular formula right when we kind of add this to water and oil the soap it becomes ionized right it becomes ionized so the ionized soap let's consider this part is made up of two radicals it's made up of a hydrocarbon radical and it's made up of a carboxyl radical right so this hydroxyl radical over here it is soluble in the oil but is insoluble in the water conversely the carboxyl radical is soluble in the water but is insoluble in the oil and because of that what does the soap do i'll basically draw this uh, stick figure and this portion is showing the hydroxy and my apology is the hydrocarbon hydrocarbon radical and this uh, ball over here is representing the carboxyl radical so the ionized soap molecules will arrange themselves in such a manner that the let's assume this is the droplet of oil that the hydrocarbon radical is projecting into the oil whereas the whereas the carboxyl radical is projecting into the surrounding water right 
so this will be the same all over here and we'll basically be having these dots over here representing the carboxyl groups same over here and in the surrounding we'll basically be having the water so in this manner we will have the formation of an emulsion and the minute droplets in this case will be the lipid droplets and these will be finely dispersed in another liquid which will be the water right so how does this arrangement lead to stability first of all because of the because of these carboxyl groups each lipid droplet droplet's surface will be imparted a negative charge and this negative charge will be attracted to the surrounding water this will lead to stability additionally because all of the lipid droplets will have the same negative charge on their surface there will be repulsion and so the oil droplets will be widely separated and they will not coalesce as they would have done in an unstable emulsion right in this particular example of an emulsion oil is serving as the disper oil is the one that is dispersed whereas the water is a dispersion medium we can have the opposite we can have a water in oil emulsion but for that to happen we'll have to use a different emulsifying agents for example if we use calcium soaps we can get a water in oil emulsion simply because the calcium is more soluble in the oil anyways so what is the what is the importance of emulsions why do we need to make them and why do we have to study them as medical students right um for one thing emulsions can they can mask the bad taste or the bad smell the bitter taste because medicines tend to have so they tend to mask the bitter taste of um of certain drugs right so for example castor oil or cod liver oil people have to take these under certain conditions if they're given in the form of emulsions the bitter taste of the castor oil or the cod liver oil will be masked right so that is one way in which emulsions are used i will repeat the the medical importance of emulsions is that they mask the bitter taste of certain drugs for example cod liver oil and castor oil and in these particular cases both the, med the both the medicinal substances are oil based so you can understand how a oil in water emulsion will work out in this particular scenario secondarily um drugs um, drugs can be administered in emulsions if you want there to be sustained release of drug within the body you don't want all of the drug to be released at once you will give it in the form of an emulsion so that there will be slow steady and sustained release of drug within the body so to reiterate emulsions can be given or emulsions can be produced with the aim of prolonging the release of drugs within the body for the sake of sustained for the sake of sustained release action anyways um so intravenous administration of contrast medium can be done in the form of emulsions contrast media are generally used when you have to do some testing so contrast media can be administered intravenously that is through the veins via emulsions important again um if you want to protect drugs from hydrolysis or oxidation in the body before it is before it is made use of you can give the drugs that is susceptible to oxidation and hydrolysis in the form of emulsions again this is something to do with drugs again right so if there is a need for intravenous administration of carbohydrates proteins or vitamins in someone who is deficient all of these organic compounds can be administered in the form of emulsions right so another thing is if we want to compare oil and water emulsions 
with water in oil emulsions. In this case, the dispersion medium is the water. The substance that is dispersed is the oil. Right. So, what are the properties? Um, this is used for, this is used in internal use within the body. This is for external use. If you talk in terms of property, this is non-greasy because as you might imagine, the greasy part is masked and is washable with water. Whereas the water in oil is definitely greasy and definitely cannot be washed off with water, right? The oil in water can be applied externally because it can have a cooling effect, right? Like vanishing creams, so because water is subject to evaporation. The water in oil is something that is applied externally to prevent evaporation of water. As you might think any lipid substance, any lipid coating over anything will prevent evaporation of water. So the different differences are not that difficult to remember if you kind of keep in mind an idea of the difference structure of water in oil emulsions and oil in water emulsions. Anyways, I'm hoping this was helpful.